expectations on a situation, a circumstance, or even a person. In other words, when things don't turn out the way we expect, we just want to give up. How many of you guys have been there? I know I have. I think we've all been there at one point in our lives. That's what was happening. That's what was being thought of by those in Jerusalem. But with new beginnings, this is the thing, with new beginnings, that always means something has to end. Right? Something has to come to an end in order for it or something else to begin. And that something may even have to die. It may even have to die. You say they didn't want Jesus to go to the cross. No, not at all. They, they wanted Jesus to set up a powerful earthly kingdom. That was their understanding. That was their expectation. That's what they wanted. Why? Because they wanted to, to go back to the days of power and like, like the days of King David. A mighty kingdom. Israel. They wanted to get out of the oppression and they wanted to get out of all of the, all of the uh, persecution from the Romans. And here comes Jesus and it's like, I have this to gain. And he talks about kingdom. He talks about power. And they think something different. They're like, all right, we're going to overthrow Caesar. Right. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take back Jerusalem. We're going to win back Israel for us, back to ourselves. But that wasn't the plan that Jesus was talking about. That wasn't the kingdom that Jesus was referring to, was it? But he's talking about a greater kingdom. A heavenly kingdom. You see, their expectation, like we have expectations, their understandings, like we have understandings, was different from what Jesus said all along. This are some of a couple of things that he said. Matthew 12. He said, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew 26, he said, Jesus said to him, It is as you said, nevertheless I say to you hereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming of the on the clouds of heaven. So that means that Jesus had to go someplace. He had to go to heaven. He was going to leave them. That's why Jesus said to the disciples, He said, you know, not let, don't let your heart be troubled. Because time was coming to that end where He was to ascend. Or he was going to leave them. And when we think of this, maybe a question pops in your mind. At least it did in mine. It's like, well then, if they had a misunderstanding and a false expectation, what then is my understanding of Jesus? What is my understanding of Jesus for my life? Why did Jesus die for us in this room? And all the other churches in town and across the nation that are celebrating and remembering uh, uh, this Good Friday. Why, why did he die for us? What was his purpose? Jesus also being called the Son of Man. What has he come to do in our lives? Matthew 18 says, For the Son of Man has come to save. We can stop there. But he says, That which was lost. He came to save that which was lost. My friends, that is you and I. We were the ones who had been lost, right? Going our own way. Doing the things we want to do. Aiming ourselves and directing ourselves straight to hell. That's where we were headed. But because of Jesus, because of Jesus, He came to save us because we were lost. I watched a movie the other night. I wouldn't recommend it at all. Because it just like has haunted me with dreams, right? Not good dreams. About this guy that gets eaten by a bear. 
He likes gets lost in the forest and he thinks he knows he's going to some place and this guy gets eaten by a bear. Man, he was lost. Why? Because he didn't stay on the trail. He didn't stay on the main trail. He thought he knew the way. He thought he remembered the way. And he went off the trail. And he's coming to the spot and he wants to see this spot and all of a sudden that thing that he expected to see out there is not there. It's like, uh-oh, I think I made a wrong turn. I think I messed up. And then he gets eaten by a bear. Man, had he only stayed on that trail, right? Had he only stayed there. That's what it means to be lost. But instead of being eaten up by a bear, we'll be eaten up by Satan. That's what we'll be eaten up by. Because he's the one who seeks like a roaring lion, waiting whom he will, what does it say? Devour. Devour. That's, this is the kind of new beginning that I'm talking about though, tonight for us. Saving that which was lost. And I, I may be preaching to the choir tonight. Maybe every one of us here tonight has a relationship with Jesus that we, are, that we are saved. That we've given our lives to Christ and not only He is our Savior, but the second part is He is to be our Lord. So many of us enjoy Jesus the Savior, but He's not Lord of our lives. He needs to be Lord of our lives. And in that, I think Jesus would say it much better. He would say, I've come to give life and life abundantly. Amen? That's what He's come to give. Life because we were dead in our sins and trespasses and life abundantly, exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever think or ask, says the Scriptures. Those things, that's what He came to give us. And life eternal. When we talk about life in Christ, we're talking about eternal life. Not life on this place, but eternal life. Life with Christ eternally. Well, it's the chance then for a new beginning from Jesus Christ. Deliverance. Yeah, deliverance, sure, from hell, from being sent to hell, of course, or us making that choice. Because God doesn't send us there. We choose to go there ourselves but also think about the deliverance of other things when we became Christians man we think differently now we talk differently we, 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 we respond differently or we should be responding differently to things right and, and in that we should be putting away those things that we did previously and, and doing the things now that God wants us to do and receive those things from Him. That's deliverance. Maybe a deliverance from drugs or alcohol or, or lustful things. Whatever it might be. So, when we glorify God in our lives... When we all glorify God in our lives, then we can truly say that Jesus did not die in vain. That Jesus didn't die for no reason. That everything that Jesus went through, everything He endured, was so that we would have a chance to spend eternity with Him. That He would make that way possible. We don't want to keep putting Jesus up on the cross. Jesus died only once. Once and for all, we're told. Hebrews 9.16 says, Because there was a testament, there has to be the death of the man who made it, that being Jesus. Hebrews 9.32, Not with the blood of goats or calves, but with His own blood, He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. I like to think of that holy place being Calvary, that He entered into and onto that place where redemption was provided for you and for me, right? That, that's 
the point. That's the thing. That's what Jesus did. Jesus died on the cross to provide a redemption, a buying back of our sin in exchange for His righteousness. And it's all because of the grace of God. You know? Because of God's grace, He sent His Son to us. To that place, Jerusalem. To that time so that we would have a way to Jesus or we would have a way of eternity with God. That's why I call this a new beginning. Because no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, this is offered to every one of us, right? Think about it. Sometimes we think that and people think, I believe, that they have to get their lives so straight and so right before Jesus could actually accept them. But that is so wrong in thinking. It's a wrong expectation, a wrong understanding. Jesus wants to take everything of us at whatever that time is that we give our lives and He then wants to mold us and shape us. You know what I mean? He's the one who wants to do it. And so as a result of that, we can come to Jesus any single time we want, no matter what we've done or where we've been. The good news of eternal life, I believe, was ushered by the cross, but it was wrapped up in the linens of grace in the tomb. I really believe that. Jesus said the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Jesus knew the plan of the Father. The plan that needed to come to fruition. The plan that needed to happen for us. There was a greater plan. It's called like the meta-narrative. The greater plan. The bigger plan. And that is the plan of salvation. And that's why Jesus died. That's why it's hard for me to lament or to actually be sorrowful in a sense. Yes, I can't mourn because I know what He provided. That's why they call it Good Friday instead of Sad Friday, right? It's Good Friday because of the good that Jesus did and what the good was that came about as a result of His dying on the cross. See, the words that I just read, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again, those are the words that He told to His disciples. He told His disciples that. Then it says, real right after, then they remembered His words. They remembered His words when they saw Him up on the cross. Ah, oh, now, now I remember. Now I remember. I think tonight we need to remember these same words. I really think we do. That tonight we can either choose to mourn and, or rejoice. That tonight we can choose to be sad or, or be joyful over what Jesus has done in obedience for all of us here in this place tonight. I say, let's choose to be rejoicing and joyful. Amen? Let's choose that. And because we have a God who by His love for the world gave His only Son. That none should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. Back to Ecclesiastes 3. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity in their hearts. I say tonight, let's celebrate and worship Jesus. Right? He's worthy to be worshipped. Jesus has actually put eternity in our hearts by salvation and by grace. He's done that for us. And especially, I pray for every one of us here tonight. He's done that. Jesus died for the who we are becoming. Okay? We're not all there yet. How many of you guys think you're all there yet? Any takers? No? 
Yeah, we're not, huh? But Jesus died for who we're becoming, not the who we are right now. Amen? He can look down the road and see things differently than what you and I can see. And I call that freedom. <laughs> for me, that is freedom. Because I'm like, Lord, thank you so much. I'm so free in Christ that I can, I can grow and I can learn. And I can experience more and more of Jesus in my life as He teaches me and shows me things that I've never known before. Remember the apostles when they spoke amazing words and they taught. And there was this time where those who knew them said, oh, they had been with Jesus. Hanging out with Jesus. Man, let me tell you, you learn and you grow just hanging out with our Savior. You know, as I said earlier, God doesn't send us to hell, but we choose that ourselves. And in that, Jesus had said that if you acknowledge me before my Father, I will, you know, if you acknowledge me, I will acknowledge you before my Father, but if you deny me, I will deny you before my Father. And those are true words. Those are words you can take to the bank. And, and in that comes a decision we have to make. And if you're here tonight and you want to experience that kind of freedom and there's everybody I pretty much know except for a few of you that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want the freedom you want to be in eternity with Jesus? You want to be able to have Him acknowledge you before the Father? Man, then that would be your time now. Just to say, yeah, I want Jesus in my life. Or maybe you have just kind of been on a side track and you need to get back on the main track with Jesus. Maybe that's you tonight as well. You're like, yeah, I need that. Man, I'm letting the world consume me. I'm letting the things of the God to do's consume me. I'm letting all these things overtake me. And Lord, I'm not spending enough time with you, Lord. I'm not gleaning from you. I'm not learning from you. I'm not growing anywhere. In fact, I'm kind of in neutral kind of in neutral and Lord I need to get back on the right track I need to get back on your main track and get off my track maybe that's you here tonight as well either way I want to pray for you and as Kiri comes up and and Matt I, I just want to pray for you guys we're going to enter into a time of just worship and then what I'd like is that during this final time of worship, as we close things out, I want to pray. And if any of you here do not know the Lord and you want to experience His goodness and His grace and His mercy in your life, and as I pray, man, with our eyes closed and our heads bowed, then just raise your hand because I want to pray for you. And if then you feel like you need to get right back on track with Jesus, I'll give you that opportunity as well. So let's pray, shall we? Lord, I, I thank you, God, for tonight. I thank you for Ecclesiastes, Lord, three. I thank you, Lord, for that. That everything is beautiful in its time, your time, your appointed time. And that God, that... Man, that they waited. We have waited so long, Lord. And maybe for some of us here, God, maybe there's someone here, a couple people here, Lord, that, that don't know you. And Lord, they, they don't want to be in opposition to you, Lord. They want to have freedom with you and they want to experience the love that you have for them, God. 
They want their sins taken away forever, past, present, and future, Lord. If there's anyone here tonight, and just raise your hand because I want to pray for you. If there's anyone here in that, in that situation, unsaved, okay? Well, maybe then you're that other, you're that other part to where you're like, Lord, I, I know you. Lord, I, I, I know you're around, but Lord, I'm not giving you any time. I'm not reading about you. I'm not sitting with you. I'm not going to church. I'm not fellowshipping with your people. I'm, I'm just kind of on my own. Maybe that's you here tonight. You're saying, I, I need to get, man, Lord, back on your track. I got to get off my own track and on your track. If that's you here tonight, then raise your hand because I want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, guys, for being open with the Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? You're like, man, I need that. All right, Lord, I, I thank you for those that raised their hands, God. You knew already before they'd come in here, Lord, that there would be a word that would touch their hearts from you, God. Your Holy Spirit would show them or reveal to them something, Lord. And I'm so thankful, God, for your faithfulness. So, Lord, for those that raise their hand, I pray, God, that you would bring them in that and on that track with you, Lord. That they no longer would desire or just find themselves on their own track saying, how did I get here? <laughs> but Lord, that you would just bring them right back on your track. So God, thank you for your faithfulness. I pray, God, that as I pray now, that they would pray also in their hearts to know that you're a faithful God, you're a good God, you're a loving God, you're a God of grace, and you're saying, yeah, man, come back onto my track. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, now for those who raise their hand, that God, that they truly, Lord, sincerity of heart and genuineness of their, of their souls, Lord, that they would just recommit or just come back to that place, Lord. They who have tasted and seen that God is so good, that God, that they, they'd want to enjoy this, that koinonia, that fellowship again. So Lord, I pray that you would grant them the desires of their hearts, Lord. That you would just say, yes, thank you. I'm blessed that you want to be on my track, says the Lord. And so God, tonight, we just want to finish out this night worshiping you, Lord. And we thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.